Welcome to Jade Kind Gaming. My name is Adam, and today I have the final Bones 5 unboxing video. The add-ons. I already did the add-on from the ship, because I did that one separately, because that was, that was a big one. Cool. But I got dragons, and spiders, an encounter, some townsfolk, some siege equipment. Just a selection of add-ons. And so, I figure, let's take a look at those as well. And I'm going to start with Townsfolk. And so, the Townsfolk are a bunch of small little single, single piece of figures that work for, I think, all human, but uh, just filling out space in cities and towns. These bases are super small, like quarter of an inch, and not all uniform, that one's a little bigger, but um, they're just kind of people. And that's useful, going out of scene. Being um, hostages or other such victims, being casualties. A lot of the sculpts keep the um, you know, arms close to the body. They're very simple. But unlikely to be hero NPC or hero mini is unlikely to be, you know, enemies. They're just filling in the scene. But uh, there's a bunch of them. And that's kind of what I needed with Townsfolk is numbers. So I can have a busy marketplace or tavern or town square or whatever it may be I do gotta say this I mean these are also a great example of just how much better they've gotten at working with the bones or I guess also bones black material to get detail in the faces so much better I mean I'm just thinking back to bones one so much nicer In fact, there's there's a detail there. I mean, it's not like they're all forced to just keep their arms in. There's some with a little more cuts than that, but still pretty basic. But the elderly or children can make for great, you know hostages or victims really motivate a, a player by having uh, children they have to save yeah so we got townsfolk now I'm gonna move on to the environment with brine wind extras we've got a couple of crates that are just slightly larger than one inch uh, per side so, a couple of those, and a couple of crates that are just slightly smaller than one inch per side. We got a trio of barrels that have sort of a base where they set. And four barrels kind of stacked together to use a decoration there. Okay, we have this little little piece here, a bunch of barrels all together. Okay, but it's in pieces. So you got a little bucket. The handles on the side are separate. The barrels fully come out, which I might actually. I think I might want to leave it where the barrels can come out, so this could be empty or full. 
you might assemble the barrels separately and then the barrels are in a couple of pieces as well okay so that first one I was able to show together this one I, I can't get the state so it's a bar and it will not go together until it's glued so you got our detailed on both ends there this comes in here this piece here fits yeah this door as sort of a side part of the bar so it's gonna <laughs> make kind of an angle here on the bottom of it there's another barrel as a support and there's a little notch in this one where it'll support here and then this beam supports the other side of this post and then there's a couple lanterns but without glue it will not stay together even slightly so <laughs> there is a table and chairs so this table is a little under two by two probably one and a half inches by one and a half inches for the just checking on the gridded mat um, with some detail on the bottom side and four of these little spindly chairs which to grab a figure to scale tables and chairs useful in so many different environments and there's this shrine whatever it's a buried boat with a skeleton and oars and The oars and skeleton are all separate. There's a cart, and this is super cool. Okay, so you got this cart, and the seat will stay up here. That'll have to be glued on there. So whatever. Detail, cart. You can put stuff in there. Um, but yes, there's actual axles. That if you only glue the wheel to the axle and once painted glue it that it encases itself in here you can have it where they actually spin furthermore the whatever this is that connects to the horse it has holes for it too so I don't know I will have to figure out which side it goes on but it would basically be in caps you know the axle would go through it as well to hold it on so like a actual rolling cart <laughs> and we have some docks two that are two inch by two inch slightly different but and then one is two inch by four inch and mine is a bit wobbly so I'm hoping hoping that some hot water can fix that there is this zombie shark raft so on the bottom there are spots for two more fins it will just fall out it's already enough pieces so see detail like all the little zombies on here I'll show you the other side but all these that are going across the top of it are separate pieces um, This is the stick stuck in the shark's side to steer it with. Yeah, lots of. I, mean, I guess zombies float? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you just don't want to get rid of them. <laughs> but yeah, each of these is. Yeah. And then we get this boat. So. Each of these is separate, um, as of course the mast here. This is um, about two by six footprint. Um, little sail to go at the top of the mast. A 
runner. Put the back there. Two ores. And then some cargo. We got like a treasure chest. Couple small little barrels. Really tiny little barrel. And you know, whatever you have in that bag there, that's, you know, vaguely humanoid shaped that you might be dropping off in the water. Got a disapproving hand spell effect, so a bit of a rude gesture. But um, with all the Big B's hand effects from the uh, corset, uh, they made this one as an add-on. Now I'm like, yeah, that'll be funny. Now I got the catapult as I begin siege equipment. And so this one has lots of detail, rope, a lot of metal and wood, just simple enough to paint. Uh, these wheels are just pegs, so you just glue those on. On each side it has sort of a post, the beam that will go across that. Just sort of the bent bit here and whatever's loaded into it. So simple catapult. I have the death rattle ballista. And so the bolt is baked right into the main part of the contraption here. There's all sorts of little details. Um, on the top there are the actual bands here. So bent back with the string there. And it's got this decorative piece here that kind of connects over top of the strings. And a wooden bit that goes on the bottom, which has the actual connection points for the wheels. And the Farflinger trebuchet is the last siege equipment that'll probably be as confusing to show off as the other two. No, actually this one should make a fair bit more sense. only because a lot of it would go together um, if there's an extra bit. So there's this and a few other shields to like armor the sides of it and there are points where there are four wheels attached but otherwise uh, you got a big weight, long arm, the ammo in there, Sitting on the platform, they'll all be wheeled. Yeah, so trebuchet. And of course, it's actually in all sorts of different pieces. I just <laughs> threw it together. <laughs> Next, we're going to take a look at the encounter at Mandapar Pass, which begins with this. So this is the entryway to this Yeti encounter. Um, so a few pieces. That's separate. As is the stairs. That's all fine. But um, so generally, what could paint it like a you know stone carving in the side of like a mountain or whatever. And I saw this set, and I was like, eh, I just wasn't sure. Then, during one of the videos, I saw the back, and I was like, ooh, I have ideas. For one, this little bit here, and just think, like, that could be the entrance into a Dwarven Forge cavern. So that, that got my interest. 
And then also the fact that there's also a little spot up above here. I was like, that looks like a height difference. Like, that might be able to work where I could probably at least fudge it to make it where that's an upper level where you have to go through. And eventually what you're looking for is to get back to whatever I put in there, again, with Dwarven Forge. So just trying to integrate it into Dwarven Forge is the thing that really sold me on, on this guy. And then we have little decorative bits, little carved yetis, and sort of pillar that's about two and a half inches tall, one inch footprint. And things like this, and, um, and this shrine here, which has little decorative bits to go on the table and whatnot. As little candles. It makes me think of Expedition Everest, which of course has the Yeti at Disney. I'm like, oh man. So that was also part of the, the temptation with this set. This is like the last set that I ended up adding to my order. Of course, the actual Yeti minis don't hurt. Um, the head of that, yeah. Of course, there are a couple Yeti or Abominable Snowman minis in previous Bone set, and having a whole group of of new ones to expand them with is exciting. Let's get set separate. Oh, and this one is crouching. That's interesting. It's furry arms. We have a pair of what they are calling snow leopards. They and snow leopards do have that big tail and thick coats, so and are one of my favorite animals since I was a child often my go-to as far as what to do projects on in school, but they have a very distinctive spot shape, and I don't know if I have the skill to paint that. And finally, this little set has a dwarf Sherpa mini, so like snowshoes, a hat, a backpack, crossbow. Now I'm going to go into Erekoth the Ancient Spider. Okay. Needs a bigger one. We're going to zoom back out a bit. So, a few pieces here. We have the main body of the spider. So, it's a large Backside with the pincer. And we have the face up here. So there are two of these that basically leave a um, big central bitey bit and then an outer uh, stabby bit as well in the two different holes on each side. And then there are eight spots for legs, fittingly enough, being a spider. And we have a bunch. It's very sharp, dangerous looking legs. There are a number of little points on the base for them to go. The base kind of has like little bits of bone. Clearly, some sort of stairs built in on either end. You got a bit of a shelob feel. And we'll finally begin the dragons, starting with Craterix Shadow Dragon. And this was another late addition to my order because I wasn't sure what I would do with it. Um, as far as like what kind of dragon I'd paint it like, and I still don't know. Obviously the base you can just paint like solid stone. 
Um, there is actually hollowed out bit, so if you wanted to do something with something lighting up in it, even you like, there's space to do like to put like if you get like the innards of a, a tea light and then extend the LED from it. Like, there's room to set that in the space easily, so that's not worthy on a transparent figure. Uh, and then you get this dragon. It's all like its wings are folding down on itself. Um, arms, the tail kind of wrapping back around itself again, like it's all like hunched together around this stone. Um, we have the top of its head, the bottom part of the mouth. Um, I guess it's hard to tell with some of the more transparent stuff. It's got very much a raised texture. I think part of me is like, anything? Do I just paint this stone and then just have it be a dragon in shadow? With like no paint? Especially with the gloss on this, it's very pretty, just as it is. I don't know. Yeah, I still don't know what I'm gonna paint this guy like, but... Whatever. It's, uh, basically, uh, huge. Fits in a three inch by three inch face, so. I got him to go with the rest of these dragons that I got, because I got, I think, all of them. There's Kalanzar Dragon, who also has a three inch face. And, like, the main body, the tail goes here, and, like, it's going up. The wings keep going up further. Like he is very vertical pose. Um, and of course, that tail's not the only support point. There's also a point here for. Feet, feet to stand, so we'll have another balance point. You got the, the legs, it's kind of like in a lift off kind of pose. Um, arms. Then its head, of course, in two pieces again, so that the mouth can be open. And um, so these wavy, spindly horns. back. I'm thinking red. It's, it's gonna be a red dragon for me. Now let's take a look at Valfurix's dragon. This one again is on the same 3x3 three three footprint and he's beefier. Meteor guy. He's got like a um, tree trunk that he's got as his base. I'll do that in a minute. <laughs> um... Yeah. Fringe of the back, armored plates. Comes off of the base, of course. Lovely texture in the wings. Fun to dry brush, see what'll get picked up on there. Um, you have one arm that's separate on here. And they're kind of stumpy little arms and then this almost crocodile kind of head and he is gonna be a green dragon for me it's based on my uses we have Ildredus the devourer who came in so who came in such a way that I could do a just a dry test fit of the entire thing Again, 3x3 three three base, which has this sort of mound of, like, snow. It's just sort of this gloop. Which is just fitting, because this is going to be my white dragon. <laughs> um, sleeker, low to the ground. Holes in the wings on this one. But, 
uh, the head. Again, the mouth open. It's gonna be two pieces. <laughs> Lots of spikes. Those have certainly some texture in there as well. Uh, the thickness of them is really noticeable because of the holes. Um, well, just stumpier. That's that sort of. It's like that base only really works for snow, right? <laughs> Armor plating on the. In there. Now let's take a look at a Granzorax dragon. Who is quite interesting. I mean, sculpt wise. So, another very vertical one here. Um, and. I just want to show off this. So, the base is not an e even circle and it goes a little bit just beyond three inches. Now, there are these two pieces of base here, this sort of ruins. Perhaps these ruins might be in some sort of swamp because of the vines here. Just a possibility. And this here is part of the dragon on the base. So you then slot the tail in there and connect this so it's kind of wrapping around this ruined staircase and then carries on up into the dragon itself. Um, scales and armor. Um, both wings are very kind of wrapped in on themselves. Spines. Not quite the same texture, more like lumpy. Uh, a different kind of look. Although there's definitely like a feel that's not to some of them, so that might pick up. Um, we got our arms. And then the head of this dragon goes on this side. has horns. So it has horns that kind of wrap around like that. I'm thinking this one, I'm just going to paint up like a black dragon. You know, that'll, that'll, that'll fit very nicely with this swamp-like base and these horns. I think a black dragon will be nice for this. And Shabyanra, the Slayer, is going to be the final dragon and the final add-on. And as uh, you may have noticed, there's only one chromatic dragon missing. You might guess. This, this stone, this could be like a... And it does have the circle here, so the three-inch base, although it itself is already extending past it. Uh, you know, a great stone. That could be like a... Um, a dry desert kind of rock that it's standing on, I think. <laughs> um, again, great, great poses. Just sort of the you taking advantage. You got the tails, so they're kind of wrapping around to be interesting poses there. Um, Legs there, shorter arms. Um, texture on these is more similar to that of the black dragon, uh, and these spines are very sharp. Uh, that one in particular, I stabbed myself with trying to get it out of the bag that it was in, and it hurts in the palm of my hand. <laughs> um, See the shape the wings kind of go out from the body there. And um, the bottom of the, the jaw here. And then, oh, how convenient. We have a nice pointy nose at the top. Nose horn. That will work perfect as a blue dragon. <laughs>
And so, yeah, they have not this chromatic dragon. Which means you can paint them like whatever color you want. But as someone that plays D&D, they work for... There are stand-ins for each of the chromatic dragons in this set. Plus, there's the shadow. Which, you know, might as well. Um, I'm hoping that for their next one, they do stand-ins for each of the metallic. Because I, I have an easier time picking up minis for the chromatic. Uh, although, obviously, it's great to have extras. Um, I'm, I might be thinking some point in the future of doing a game where I just, I just you know, let the players get up to a high enough level where they're just dealing with swarms of dragons. I mean, that, who doesn't want, you know, the dragons to all just team up and have the players have to fight all of them at once? Like, groupings, even? Like, maybe not each of the colors, but, like, just having it where there's, like, a whole family of, you know, three to five blue dragons all together and <laughs> different ages. But, yeah, so, um, dragons are definitely, like, and, and of the stuff that I've painted, um, you know, the dragon that I, that I had from before that I painted was one of the favorite ones I had to paint, and so these are, are definitely ones I'm looking forward to. Um, big, big minis are fun to paint. Big monsters are exciting to paint. They're also very expensive to buy pre-painted, so that is convenient. Little, little ones, eh, these guys are boring to paint. They're needed, and so I still get them, because I still need them on the table, so... <sighs> so I still get them, because eventually I need to paint them. But, uh... Yeah, so that's, that is it for my Bones 5. Um, lots of cool stuff to paint. As I paint it, I'll get it put up on my Instagram, linked below, and at the front of my YouTube page. Um, if you want, much of this may be available. Um, if you act like right when this is put up, when Reaper is relaunching the Pledge Manager and you can late back for only a slight increase... Uh, if not, eventually it will all end up out on retail, either through their website or other sources. All available down below. Um, but thank you for watching. Like the video. Uh, which is your favorite dragon? I got the five chromatic in the sh shadow. Which one do you like best? Um, comment below with that. And subscribe if you haven't.